Hello everybody, welcome back to Pages and Pens. My name is Julie and today I am here with some 2023 reading goals. Let's jump right into it. I'm doing some end of the year bulk filming because I have time today. So we're just going to ignore the fact that like the last four videos or what will be four videos, I'm wearing the same exact thing, right? We're fine with it. I wanted to talk about my 2023 reading goals because I've already filmed my writing goals. I don't know what order everything is going up in, but I have a lot of them. I don't know where that's going to leave me for reading. I still have to film my 2022 reading wrap up, kind of like my stats and highlights. In 2021, I think I read like 77 books. Last year, I know for sure I read double that, at least. Um, I'll have to look at all of my stats when I film that video. I don't know that I'm going to be reading that much in 2023. I have a lot to get done in 2023 in terms of my career, in terms of writing, in terms of a potential job change. There's just a lot going on. There's a lot of unknowns for me. And I think that all of that could very, very deeply affect my ability to read and my concentration levels. So here's what I do know I want to do in 2023 for my reading. I want to continue to mood read. I'm not setting TBRs. I'm most likely not going to join any book clubs or challenges or prompt kind of reading. I'm going to just continue to read what I enjoy reading. I would like to keep my unread physical TBR under 100. I think right now because I just got a couple of books that I had still not received from the Descent fundraiser charity thing where authors put up books for bidding and the money went to like abortion rights and abortion funding. I got two more books from that that I thought I had already gotten all my prizes. I still got two books. So that put me at 101 unread books. And then I got an unplugged, which put me at 102 unread books. And I know for sure I ordered some exclusive editions that are coming. I haven't read everything that I've ordered. So my unread books are quickly going to be uh, up over 100. They're already up over 100. So I want to keep it below 100, which means reading more from my physical shelves. I read without a doubt, I don't know the exact numbers in 2022, without a doubt, I read more on my Kindle than I did my physical shelves or physical books. I read a lot of KU. Now, a lot of that was just like my brain space. I am sure I'm going to continue to read KU. I'm going to continue to read ebooks and erotica. That's just going to be like where my mind can go. Fantasy for me and like larger books that I'm like super, super interested in actually haven't been working because I've been focusing on writing. So the mindless kind of reads of just random novellas or smut has been perfect for me, which is what I the majority, I'm sure, of what I read in 2022. Again, I haven't looked at my stats. Read more of my physical shelves. Goal number one, keep me under 100 unread, top priority. Number two, cut down on spending. Do not buy as many books. Or if you're going to buy books, make sure they're books that you love, aka exclusive editions. If I'm going to be spending money on books. I don't want to be unhauling stuff that I don't like. So make sure you like it. If you like it, then sure, treat yourself to an exclusive edition that's super, super pretty. But don't go buying every book that you get. Like this year, I bought a ton of books that I had already listened to in audiobook or read on KU or were on KU, but I wanted the physical copy of before I had even read it. And then I read it when I don't like this and then unhauled it. And even if I love the audiobook and I love the book and I love the author and I want to support them, do I need them on my shelves? Not really. Am I going to reread them? Probs not. But now they're taking up space on my shelves. And there's no real reason to get rid of them. But there's also no real reason to have them. So I need to cut back on my spending. Read more physical books off my shelves. Cut back on spending. I want to make sure that I am either keeping up with or finishing series. That means that this shelf of Sanderson nonsense, I need to start tackling it because I haven't been and it's getting ridiculous. I have Mistborn Era 2 that I still need to finish and those books are not big. I can finish them up no problem. I want to make sure if I'm starting something I'm finishing it or if I'm starting something I'm staying up with it. I want to DNF and I want to do it with extreme prejudice. Okay I've been kind of reading a lot of things and some of the stuff I've just kind of been like eh I don't love it but it's here or it's on KU and it's free so I might as well just keep on going. Or I don't love it, but I can skim these sections and it'll be all right. I'll, I'll get the gist in the end. It's like, no. I did DNF a lot this year. 
but there were certain things that I finished that I probably didn't need to. So I need to get better about that and just owning it. Again, I'm not rating things. My accounts for like where I track my own reading, they're private. So it's like nobody's going to know. It doesn't matter. It's just for me. Like I just need to get better about just doing it. I thought I was good. And then I realized that this year I still read stuff I really didn't want to, which is silly. And then last up is I want to reread. A period end of story. I reread a good chunk of books in 2022. And I want to continue to do that in 2023. Is that going to help my unread books on my shelves? Nope. No, it isn't. However, I think that revisiting my favorites is really cool. And I would like to do more of it because I realized when I was rereading books this year, how much I loved them and how much my growth made me see different things or read different things or find different nuance. It reminded me about the amazing storytellers that I love. It helped me write better. I think that there's so much joy to be found in new stories and in new loves and in new authors. But there's also something really fantastic about revisiting things that you know you love and then looking at it through a different lens and taking different things from it. And I want to be able to do that. So I want to take time to also reread some books. So if you see me not rereading, you feel free to scream at me. And then kind of similarly, I want to be really, really, really cutthroat about what I actually accept in ARCs and or ask for on NetGalley or from publishers. Um, I get publishers that reach out to me a ton. Can we send you this? Can we send you that? A lot of them go unanswered or just like, thank you for thinking of me, not interested because I just don't have the time to read. Some of them I genuinely am interested in and then I grab them. Uh, or some I'm like, oh, that's a kind of a cool premise. I might end up enjoying it, but then I never read it before the publication date. And I know as an author, that sucks. I don't wanna do that to people. Like they're a huge publishing house. I'm, they're not waiting on me, but still. And then on NetGalley, I kind of go like willy nilly and I'm like, you know, that looks cool. I'll get that. That looks neat. I'll get that. And then I'm stuck wanting to read them because I don't want my score to go down and I want to be able to continue to like get the books that I really want. So I need to be careful about that. There are certain authors that I will go on there and look for all the time. And if they have one that pops up on there, I'm going to request it, period, end of story. They are favorite authors. They're auto buy authors. I know I'll get a physical copy later anyway, but if I can get it early, I'm gonna. Those things I'm okay with. And I've gotten better at the end of 2022 about that, but I need to make sure I carry it into 2023. I'm auto approved for a couple different publishers on NetGalley and I'll often just go, ah, I know I can get it, so I'll just get it. And then I'm like, why did you do that? Because now you have to, now you have to read this thing so that you can give it a a rating and a review and you didn't really need to do that just because it's there you know you know where I'm at I'm sure as a reader you totally understand that but that's that's where I'm at so I need to get better about that too those are my reading goals I I genuinely just hope that I continue to read what I love and what inspires me and or what I need to give my brain a break I, I don't want to have to police my own reading or say that I have to read a certain thing I hope to cultivate my shelves in a way that it only holds books that I love. But let's see if I can stick to my couple tenants. Buy less, keep my TBR, unread TBR under 100, and reread some books. Hey, what are we doing up here, bubs? Huh? Reread, curb spending, keep my unread TBR under 100. See if we can hold true to that and I'll check it at the end of the year. Let me know some of your reading goals. Do you have like a number amount that you want to get to, a series that you want to start or finish? Uh, let me know what some of yours are. But that is it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up, click subscribe, and click the notification bell so you know when I put up new videos. But that is it for this one. Bye, friends. Hi, baby, baby. You're going to rub on the tripod? <laughs>